MaxQDA allows you to set variables for each of the documents. So if you wanted to be able to separate out what women between the ages of 30 and 39 with at least a college education and two or more kids said about a topic compared to another group, you would want to take advantage of the variables options. So in the variables drop down menu, I would start by going to the list of variables. This shows us all the variables that we currently have. Right now, all of them have this red square in the far left column, which tells us that these are all system variables. These are things that MaxQDA keeps track of uh, from the very beginning of a project. So it keeps track of the document group, the document name, when it was created, etc. Now that's helpful, but we also want to be able to create our own variables. To do so, we click on the blue square here, or hit Control N. We can then give this new variable a name. So if we want to keep track of, of the gender, we might type gender here. And then you can tell MaxQDA what type of variable it is. A string variable uh, lets you type in uh, any type of characters, whether they're letters or numbers. Integer is if you're only going to have whole numbers, such as number of children. Floating point allows you to use a decimal point, so you can have values such as 3.75. Uh, you can also have it formatted for a date or time, or use booleans. In this case, we want to be able to type male or female, so we're going to go with string. And if you're not sure which type you have, you can always just use string. Uh, that'll allow you to uh, type in any characters that you need. If I'd like, I can also put in a missing value. So if I haven't entered a variable value for a certain document, it would automatically insert this missing value until I did uh, insert something. So in this case, I'm going to leave it blank. When I click OK then, we can see that a new row has been added. It has a blue square telling us that this is a user-defined variable. It has the name, the type, etc. Now this is the list of all the variables, but if we want to then enter values for each of them, we have to click on this fourth icon, switching to variable view. Now we can see all the different variable values we have for each document. So for the document Teresa, we can see the document group, the name, when it was created, number of coded segments, etc. And when we get to the far right, we can see there's a spot here for gender. So if I want to enter a gender, I just double click on the cell and then I can type. Teresa, female. And then I hit enter. Takes me to the next cell. Joanna, I also want to enter female. John, male. I can also click on the arrow and select from a list of those variable values that are already in the column. Or, as I'm typing, it will do an autofill. So if I see it's already finishing female for me, I can hit enter. So I'm then just going to go through, enter all the values, and MaxQDA now has a variable value for all of my interviews with the gender. If I want to add another variable, I click again on the fourth icon from the left, and I can create a new variable. And you can create just about as many variables as you want and use them later for your mixed methods functions uh, or activation by variable to use our example from before to find out uh, what the women said about a certain topic as opposed to what the men said about that topic. Mm -hmm.